Before we get into today's video, I would like to welcome three new subscribers. Kenobi, Cam Berry, and Red Wolf 13 UK. Welcome to the channel. And now, on with today's video. Greetings, my dear viewers. It is I, Drehan, and welcome back to another Dungeons and Dragons character conversion uh, based around the new Spelljammer setting that was released recently. Today I wanted to take a look at another uh, franchise that I sort of grew up with. I actually grew up with this franchise more than I did Star Trek or Star Wars, which is hilarious. Uh, anyway, we are talking about Stargate. Uh, more specifically, Stargate SG-1 and Stargate Atlantis. We are looking at Teal'c. Uh, Teal'c is one of the members of the Stargate crew. Uh, but he wasn't originally that way. I don't exactly remember what episode it was, as it's been a long time. But he, according to Y Research, he is a member of a alien community known as the Jaffa, who are genetically engineered humans for the sole purpose of being vessels for a race of aliens uh, called the the Cold. Uh, anyway, one of these aliens is known as Apophis, another one, Ra, uh, you know, the Egyptian gods. And their whole thing was trying to take over Earth for uh, SG-1. Uh, there was a totally different thing going on with Stargate Atlantis, but it had the same crew. Uh, anyway, not important. What is important is that Teal'c saw the error of the Jaffa and turned traitor and started working for SG-1, who are the heroes of the series. And, well, <laughs> I'll talk a little bit more about him as I get into this video. Starting things off, we got the point by system working for us. 14 in strength and constitution, 13 in dexterity. Intelligence is going to be a 12, while Wisdom and Charisma are a 10. While his social skills are socially acceptable on his original planet, they are a smidge lacking on our Earth. With our race of humans. Which makes them look kind of... Uh, dense in some areas. But he still tries to follow the rules of our uh, society. And it's actually shown in a couple different episodes. He knows how to follow rules and will learn rules rather quickly. But the social norms are still a little lacking. Once again, races Jaffa, genetically engineered humans, so we're going with the human variant, which will give us a plus one to our strength and our dexterity. For our skill, we'll go with survival, and for our feet, we're going with observance, which will give us a plus one to our intelligence. This will give us a plus five to investigation and perception, uh, the passive perception and passive investigation. He's still good at observing things, he's just not good with uh, the human socialism from Earth. Again, things are a little lacking there. For background, we're going to go with the soldier. Uh, not only a soldier for the Jaffa, but for Stargate, since Everyone there, if they're not a government scientist, they are a government soldier. So, soldier. 
obviously. So proficiencies are going to be Intimidation and Athletics. You get one gaming set of your choice and Land Vehicles as tool proficiency. You also get the feature Military Rank. Moving on to Class, we're going to start things off with Fighter. This will give us a D10 hit die, some decent hit points to start off with, proficiencies in all armor and shields, simple weapons, martial weapons, saving throws are constitution and strength, skills will go with acrobatics and perception. For your fighting style, close quarters shooter would be the most useful, and I'll get into why here in a moment, uh, well, more like in a couple of levels. But anyway, uh, Second Wind is also a feature you get. Fighter level 2 gets Action Surge. And we're going to multi-class real quick into Artificer. Again, I'll, I'll explain why in a little bit. We'll get Proficiency in Tinker's Tools and Thief's Tools. Looks like I forgot to edit that little bit out. Uh, magical Tinkering and Spellcasting using your Intelligence Modifier which is not that big of a deal at the moment, but it'll be all right. Level two artificers get infuse item. Level three fighters get a martial archetype. We're going to go with the Renegade, which can be found in Dark Tides of Bilgwater, Legends of Runeterra, which can be found on D&D Beyond. This is the partnership uh, supplement. So it is kind of core, but not really. It's kind of like a second party, similar to Cobalt Press. Uh, anyway, you get some proficiencies in deception and persuasion. You get the gunfighter form. We're gonna go with sniper and we get a weapon choice. Now, we're going off of the uh, staves that the Jaffa used throughout the series. These are known as Matok. And they are very similar to blasters, so they are a firearm of short. So we'll go with Sniper. And for our weapon choice, it's going to be the Caliber Net and the Lightning Round, since it's very similar to the Matok. Uh, the firearm save DC is going to be 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your charisma modifier. Moving on to level 4 fighter, go ahead and increase your strength and your intelligence each by 1. So we have those rounded off to a nice even number. Moving on to level 5 fighter, we get our extra attack. Level 6 fighter, go ahead and increase your dexterity by 2 points. Level 7 Fighter gets Cunning Shot from the Renegade. And Level 8 Fighter gets a Ability Score Improvement, but we're going to go with a Feat instead. And we're grabbing the Sentinel, since the Martok are a type of Staff. So it makes sense to be able to bop foes over the head with your Martok if they get a little too close. Honestly, I think having the Cantrip Shillelagh would actually be useful for this build. But we have no way to get it, unfortunately. Moving on to level 3, going back to the Matak, these are technically a staff. So the Artillerist Artificer would actually be a good fit. This will give us proficiency in Woodcarver's tools, the Eldritch Cannon and artillery spells being Shield and Thunder Wave. Just for being a third level Artificer, we get the right tool for the job. Level four Artificers gets an ability score improvement. Go ahead and increase your Charisma by two points. Level nine Fighters get Undomitable. Level 10 Fighters, thanks to the Renegade feature, be Grin and Barret, which Honestly, is really good. I didn't, didn't get to talk about this last time I used the subclass, but when you use your second wind feature, you get a plus one to your armor class and a plus 10 to your movement speed for that turn. That's not bad. I kind of like that. Moving on to level 11 fighter, we get another use of our extra attack. 
allowing us to attack three times per attack action. For fighter level 12, we get another ability score improvement, but we're going to bypass that for the pole arm master feat, once again referencing the Matak. Level 13 fighters get another use of the indomitable feature. Level 14 fighters get an ability score improvement. Go ahead and increase your wisdom by two points. By this time, he's probably learned about uh, society and has a better grasp around the social norms. So it makes sense that Teal'c would have a higher wisdom. And this also helps with Teal'c's observation skills as well. Level 15 fighters of the Renegade Martial Archetype get Right Gun for the job. This allows you to switch your gunfighter forms very quickly. So if you don't have your Matak, you can always switch out for a, a Pistolier version, which is pretty useful. And finally, level 5 artificers get the Arcane Firearm, finally ending the Matak references. Now, while this is the end of the build, it's not the end of the video. We do have spell list, and these are the spells that I recommend for your artificer levels. For cantrips, lightning, lightning, lure, and message. Your first level spells: absorb elements, detect magic, and identify. For your second level spell, invisibility. These are just my recommendations, you do not have to take this list exactly, nor do you have to take this build exactly. These are just the recommendations I have for a lore accurate build. And with that, that is the end of today's video. I do hope that you enjoyed. Tune in next time for when we take on Digimon once again. This has been Drehan, and I am offline.